So Jotai is another React state management library for React. I've never actually used Jotai before, so this is sort of going to be a uh, first impressions reaction video slash tutorial. So Jotai is actually from the same authors that created React Spring, which is an animation library or you must also heard of Zustand. I made a video about that recently. So these guys are, you know, they're a group of developers that I feel like they know what they're doing. They're, they're very used to uh, creating very nice uh, reusable solutions. So let's jump right in. It says that if you're gonna use it, you just need to npm install Jotai. I've got a running, you know, your basic Re React app here. And I'm just gonna do Actually, I think this is on yarn. So I'm going to do yarn add Jotai for using NPM, use NPM install Jotai. All right, first thing I'm going to do after installation is import Atom from Jotai. From my understanding, the way Jotai, Jotai works is you, you kind of think about the little pieces of state that you have that you want to maintain um, and you create, you know, these things called atoms and then from those atoms, you can kind of compose those into more complicated um, states. So let's just run through a, a very basic example of maybe uh, just having a count that we can increment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an atom and we're going to provide that with an initial value of zero. All right. Once we have that atom, you can then start using that in any component using the use atom hook. And the syntax is very similar to use state if you're familiar with that. So you'll have the state and then you'll have a setter. And then you're going to do use atom and then you'll pass in the atom that you created. So in an example here, we got a count atom that we're going to put in here, right? And let's just very quickly print out the state that we have so we know that it's working. So I'm going to display count and let me put this side by side with our application. All right, so we just got zero over there. Let's see if we can add a button here, which allows us to increment that count. So I'm just going to use set count. And then the way this works is you can pass in a function here, which has, which it passes in the original value. So for example, you can do original and then you can do original plus one. See, so as I, click this add button, it's, it's, it's incrementing. So pretty basic, you know, maybe for some people it would be easier to read if you made this previous, so it's the previous value, right? So at, at this point, it, there's really no difference to something like use state, right? You can do the same exact thing with use state. Um, so this is not a great showcase yet, but let's take a look at a, a couple different other things you can do. All right, so the, the cool thing with atoms is that you can create multiple atoms that kind of compose into more complex states. So for example, let's say that we were trying to derive a different view or value from this original count atom. So for example, what if we simply wanted to display what is the, the what's the double of this count? Like, so for example, if you had two, we would want to display four. So if we were to create a double count atom, what you can do with Atom is you can also pass in a function in here. And this, this callback is going to have uh, this get method passed into it as the first parameter. And what you can use with this get is you can use it to extract the value of another Atom. So for example, uh, in our case, we want to get our count Atom and then we simply just want to double that. And then similarly, we can bring that into a component by uh, using use Atom. And then we pass in our double count atom. And then similarly, we can do, we can extract the, the value of that. And let's just print that out. Let's do something like this. And again, let's go back to our browser. Notice that as I add to it, it's showing us the double of that value. All right. Another example, maybe you wanted to derive a you know, is this value a an even number or not? So if we were to do is count even, right? Same thing. Let's do a get and let's pass in. Let's do let's get our value. And then we're just gonna see if it's even using the modulo operator. 
All right, and same thing to bring that into our component, we're just gonna do a use atom, we'll pass in our new composed or derived atom in that, and then we're gonna extract is even as a value. And let's go ahead and print this out. All right, so zero initially is even. As I add to that, you should see that it's kind of going back and forth, right? So nine is not even, 10 is even, and so on. So that's sort of the basics of it is you can create these little pieces of state and you can kind of compose them together to create different views of that state. Let's take a look at what else we can do. So taking a look at the, the documentation, you can also kind of do this kind of more complex version of an atom where you'll see that you can pass two things in. You can pass a function for reading a value and you can pass a function for doing some kind of a set to change those values. So. As an example, uh, you know, our, our previous example here where we want to be able to increment the value, we can actually do it another way by doing something like this. So if we were to create an atom, which has, you know, first we kind of just grab the value of our count atom, right? So that's kind of equivalent of what this is already doing. But what we're going to do is we're going to change how the set count works, we want to turn that into an increment like this. So the way we're going to pull that off is by passing in a second method here. And this has the signature of, as you can see in the IntelliSense here, it's got get set. And what you can do with this is you can use the set just like, you know, as a setter. So you can pass in an existing atom in here, in our case, it's the count atom, and then you pass in a value to what you want to set it to. So perhaps we, in this case, we're trying to increment it, right? So we're going to do, we're going to get our atom again, count atom, and then we're going to add one to it. All right, so what we effectively did is we made a more custom atom, right? I can then take this and pass it down here, and now we have exactly what we want here, which is we want account and ability to increment. So I can completely replace this. We just increment and let's take a look at how that performs, right? This should work exactly the same as before, but the benefit is it kind of detaches the, uh, the state management logic away from your components and into these composed atoms, which I think is a pretty cool pattern. So you can do some really cool stuff with this. So another interesting thing that I should mention is that Jotai also comes with a provider. So let's say that we, let's just wrap our entire application with this provider. And let's say that we wanna move this uh, count and increment into a different component. So I'm gonna create a new component. Let's just make this called count.js. And I'm just gonna move over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this count and this button inside this other component, my count component. And then I'll also move this kind of this use atom hook to that since that's the one that's using that value. And then I think I'm going to move these actual atoms into a different file. I'm not really sure what the, the convention is for, for where you're supposed to do this, but I assume you got to put them in a file somewhere so that they can be shared. So let's create an atoms.js file and I'm just going to paste this stuff in here, right? And then I'm going to make these be exported so that we can get this from any file. And since we're using the increment count atom here, I'm going to import in the count.js, try to import increment count atom from atoms. All right, and then I'm going to import my account component that we just created and I'll do it. I'll bring that back in here. And I actually missed the import for use Adam from Jotai here on our account. All right, so what we have here is effectively the same as before, right? We just have our account. It's just displayed a little bit differently because of the, the flex layout here. But now our count is in its own component, right? It's utilizing that new increment count atom that we have in our atoms file or our atoms are 
co-located in this file so that it's easy for us to reuse across different components, right? If I were to create a new version of count, I could also import my other atoms in there, you know, to maybe compose different atoms. Like maybe we were trying to create a, a decrement as an example. You know, actually, if we were to just create, you know, you can also create a write only atom according to the documentation. So if we were to do decrement count atom, you know, for example, in our case here, we, you maybe don't, don't need to read a value. You can just pass in the, the second argument here. So we'll take this, copy it over, but instead of adding, we're going to subtract. All right. And if I were, if I were to create a new component, uh, let's call it decrement button. You know, I can bring in use Adam in here again, and we're going to also import our, our decrement count Adam. And similarly, we're going to do use Adam and pass in our new decrement count Adam. And because I only really need the, the second value from this, right? Because we didn't have a, a read argument. It's, it's a write only atom. We're just going to do the decrement here, right? So similarly, I'll add a new button here that just does subtract and on click, it's going to do decrement. All right, let's bring that into our application. You know, maybe let's just add it into our, our account here. So we're going to do import decrement button from decrement button. All right. So now we should be able to add and subtract, but let's go back to talking about this provider. We didn't really discuss this. And um, this one is something I'm actually kind of, uh, curious about because in the documentation, it says that, you know, typically when you see a provider in, in react, you kind of, you think of it as something that provides you know, value globally, right? You, you, for example, you'd have a provider for Redux to provide all of the state in the entire application. The use case here sounds a little bit different as I'm reading it. You know, it says that provider is to provide state to a component subtree, and you can use multiple of them. If you don't use a provider, it kind of just goes into a provider less mode and it works regularly, but in this case, providers are actually useful for scenarios where you maybe want to differentiate the state between subtrees. And it also allows us to provide initial values. So let's take a look at that. What does that actually mean? So let's say that we had two of these count counters, right? So if I were to just double this, you'll see that I'll have, you know, the same exact thing, just completely doubled. And let's add a little break line here to visually make this a little bit better. So you'll notice that as I add on one of them or subtract, it's manipulating the state on both sides, which is pretty cool that it's immediately sort of global in that sense. And actually, I think if I remove the provider here and made it provider less, it works the exact same way. So what's the purpose of the provider? Well, what you can do is if I were to wrap both of these with their own providers, like so, what that actually will do, according to the documentation, is that it kind of isolates them to have their own state. So now, as I add here, they are now able to maintain their own values of that state. So that's pretty cool. Usually when you see a provider, it's for making the state global and shared. Uh, in this case with Jotai, it seems like if I understand it correctly, the state is sort of automatically reusable slash global. But if you don't want that, you can actually introduce providers to sort of isolate the state in that sense. So that's, that's an interesting concept that I'm not sure I've seen before. It also says that we're able to provide an initial value. So perhaps, you know, let's take a look at this API. It seems like I need to pass in an array. And within that, it takes 
a list of arrays that is sort of the atom and then the value. So let's try that. So initial values. I want to see if I can maybe initialize this first one to have a count of five. So I think if I understand that correctly, I need to import my atom in here, my count atom from atoms. And I'm going to say that for this count atom, I want it to start with five. So my understanding is it should sort of overwrite this initial value that we have here specifically just for this subtree browser back up and notice that it starts with a five and it's still kind of isolated. I can still add and subtract to it. And as I refresh, you know, it's back to initial value of five. So that's, that's pretty cool. So I believe that's really it for the basics of Jotai. Uh, hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. The, the big kind of takeaway that I got from this, it, it's very much, I think the way they explained it is, you know, with your typical state management libraries like Redux or Zustand, um, it's kind of a top-down model where you usually will create some kind of store and this, the state kind of just flows down into components. Whereas in Jotai, it's kind of more bottom up where you're composing little bits of atoms into greater, bigger pieces of state. There are other stuffs here in the readme that I would recommend you check out if you found this interesting. So for example, you can actually also do async stuff and it actually has support for now notice there's a tag here that says need suspense. So they have direct support for suspense. Although from my understanding, suspense is still kind of experimental, right? So it says, you know, react doc says the suspense is experimental. So I personally probably would not use Jotai for, you know, making API calls. I'd, I'd, I'd personally use react query for that. Um, but it's cool that they they're kind of forward looking and they're they're looking to immediately support suspense. So that's pretty cool. In the documentation, they also have a showcase section here that I recommend checking out if you're interested in sort of learning more. They have some uh, much more complex examples here, like a to -do, this to do example I thought was pretty good to understand things. All right. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of Jotai. Is it, are you using it in your application? Is it something you're using in production? I'd love to know. Um, have you found it better or not as good as other libraries like Redux, Zustand, or your just basic React hooks? Uh, let me know. I'd love to. I'd love to further understand the use case for this. Uh, with that said, I think that's it. I do plan to make more videos on sort of similar topics with react state management because i'm pretty interested in that uh, so make sure to like subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one